Browser password managers, are they a good idea to use them? You're going to find a load of videos saying don't use them. And yes, they do have good reason to say that. However, there is a caveat. If you're somebody who is a bit wary about using a third party password manager and you think it's a bit beyond you, then they can be a good idea. If you're somebody who struggles to think of a unique strong password, that's a good idea. If you're somebody who struggles to remember the different passwords for all the different sites without writing it down, it's a good idea. Nothing wrong with writing it down, as long as you don't keep it next to your computer, keep it in another room somewhere safe. Talking about the safe, keep it in the safe. So, password managers in a browser, yes, they are a good idea. The security of them have come on leaps and bounds in the last two years. There was a time in the bad old days when all of those passwords were stored in plain text and anybody could read them. So, if you're the only person who's using your computer and you're not sharing it with other people, yes, it is a good idea. If you're sharing it with other people, then it's probably a bad idea. You want a third party browser password manager. Sorry, third party password manager. <laughs> You're tongue tied there. So, yeah, disclaimer I use a third party password manager because it being cross platform. I can use it on an Android, I can use it on a Windows, I can use it on an Apple, and I can use it in Chrome, I can use it in Edge, and I can use it in Firefox. It's really diverse. Whereas Firefox can only be used in Firefox. Edge in Edge and Chrome in Chrome. So having said that, let's have a look at the differences between these password managers in these different browsers. There are three in this series of videos, so check them all out. And you will find out which of the three is my personal favorite. So without further ado, let's have a look to see how we use them and how safe they can be. OK, so we're going to be looking at using the password manager built into the Google Chrome browser. So now we've opened the browser. First thing we're going to want to do is to make sure that we're logged into our Google account. I can see here that I am. Now I'm going to click the three dots next to that. Come down to settings. And I want to make sure synchronization to my Google account is turned on and it is and it's telling me I know it is because it's saying to turn it off if I want to. Down below we have autofill. Now you want to have the uh, synchronization turned on so that you can use the password manager to its full ability. So here we are in the password manager. Offer to save passwords is turned on and it usually is by default. If not, you just simply click on this and it will turn it on or off. Auto sign in. Now this is a Marmite feature. Some people love it, some people hate it. What happens is after you've logged into a site and the next time you go back, your stored username and password will automatically be filled in for you. Some people like to be able to have more control over that, so they'll turn this off and then they have to tell the browser that they want to log into that site. Down below that we have check passwords. Now this is a fantastic feature that at one time you would have in a paid for browser. So you'd have to pay for this feature. Now it's included free with all of the top browsers. So what would happen is you've logged into a site and then uh, sometime down the road that site gets attacked and they experience a data breach. So all the information is stolen from there and it happens to be that your username and passwords were also stolen in that data breach. You would be notified of that and that would give you a chance to then go back to that site and change your password, hopefully before the criminals can get to it. And also I hope that you've enabled two-factor authentication if that website it's that feature because that's going to be your belt and braces of your online safety. 
Down below that, we have saved passwords. As here, you can see that I haven't got any saved at the moment. Underneath that, we have never saved. Now, why would you want to never save a password? Well, it could be that you're sharing your computer with other people and you don't want them to know your login details for a particular website. Now, let's come back up. What we're going to do is we're going to have a look and see what it's like in a real world situation. So we're going to go to B and Q. OK, so now we're at the B&Q website and what we're going to do is sign in. Now, whether you're signing in or creating a new uh, account doesn't matter because the password manager will re just remember your username and your password the first time you use it in the browser. Here you can see that the email address is empty and the password is empty. So let me just enter my email address and you forgive me if I blur this out. So now I've entered my email address. All I need to do is enter the password. So what we would do, if you can't think of a password, then this is where the password manager comes in handy because it can generate a unique, strong password for you. Let's right click on there. And if you look in this box that's popped up, at the top we have show all saved passwords and suggest password. If you only have show all saved passwords and you cannot find suggest password, let me show you this little tip, little bonus that I didn't know about when I made the previous video. Up on the top right, click on the icon for your user account. Underneath that, you have these three circles, these three buttons. One of them looks like a key. If you hover the pointer over that, you'll see it says passwords. Click that. And then you should, when you come back to the password section and you right click again, you should now see suggest password. Now that should be on by default. But in my case, in my browser, it was not. OK, so let's recap. I've entered in the email address. Now I'm going to enter the password and I'm going to use the password generator for that. So I right click and then I come up to suggest password. And now it's offering to, to generate a password for me. This is a 15 digit password, which is great. It's good. Because on the industry, they say that it should be eight digits or more, eight characters or more. But security experts are actually saying it should be between 12 to 16 minimum characters or more. It depends which security expert you speak to, 12 to 16. This is using 15, so this is a bang on, bang on in the uh, ballpark here. So to use that, all you would have to do is click where it says use suggested password. But before I do that, you'll notice underneath there it says Chrome will save this password in your Google account. You won't have to remember it. So this will save it to your Google account not to your browser. That's important because in the bad old days, passwords were saved to your browser and browsers were notorious for being uh, hacked. So because this is being saved in your Google account, it's being encrypted into your Google account. So it's got that extra bit of protection. It's got that bit of safety there that it never used to have because it's going to be protected by your Google password. So let's use this. We'll click use suggested password. And if you want to see what your password is, then 
click show and you'll see a slightly bigger version than what you saw down below there. Okay, so all we have to do now is sign in. And you'll see that Chrome is offering to save the password for us. And we have a choice to save or never save. So I'm going to click save. And basically that's it. There's a little bit more which you can see on here and I'll, I'll please stay stick around to, to see what that is. Now that we're in this account, let's just make sure that it is working. So we'll sign out. So now we, we've signed out, let's assume that we've got away uh, dinner break or something like that. And then we want to come back and log in. So we click sign in. And you'll notice that the email address and the password have been filled in for us. So auto filling is working. Not going to log in because there's not much more to show you on that. Back here in the password manager, you'll now notice that on the website we have DIY.com the username, which obviously is blurred for this video, and the password, which is a bunch of dots. So remember that I icon we could click on so we could see what the password was. We have the same thing here. So let's see what happens. It won't let us see it unless we enter the Windows password because I'm using a Windows computer here, obviously. Um, so it wants my, my Windows password to be able to, for me to be able to look at the saved one on, on the Google account. Next to that, we have these three epsilons, the epsilon with those three buttons. And we can copy a password, edit a password and remove the password. Let's see what happens when I try to copy. It's asking me for my Windows password. What about if I try to edit? Again, it's asking me for my Windows password, but when I click remove, it's gone. It's, it's deleted it. It's removed it. It never asked me to use my Windows password. It didn't even have the decency of saying to me, are you really sure you want to delete this? You know, uh, click yes that you want to delete it. No, it just deleted it. So, got to be careful with that feature. If you was in a third party app, password manager, then uh, you can have extra security, which would then ask you to confirm that you want to delete it before you actually do delete it. And that's basically how the web browser password manager works. If you like this video, then please give us a thumbs up, subscribe by hitting the subscribe button to our channel. And if you want to be notified of any future videos, then click the notification icon bell. Thank you for watching.